So, good morning students, uh, welcome to the NPTEL lecture course on ar architectural acoustics. This lecture 9 is on uh, the concept of reverberation. So, in the lecture 8, we have seen the uh, how the reflection and absorption can uh, take place in a uh, enclosed area and how can we measure the absorption for a particular surface or for a particular panel which can be rendered in a surface. So, today we will going to uh, discuss about the reverberation which is one of the major and most important phenomena in room, room acoustics. So, the lecture objective will actually uh, outline like the we will uh, conceptualize the reverberation and the reverberation time and uh, we will associate this as a reverberation time uh, uh, to the room reflection and the absorption because these two are the, the one of the the very uh, striking phenomena in the indoor acoustics and how to relate that with the, the reverberation. The, and we will try to develop or we will definitely going to develop a, the, the fundamental equation to find the reverberation time in enclosed space. So, uh, in enclosed space, suppose there is a stage and there is a speaker and there are two, three audience, one audience in the very front row and one audience in suppose sitting in the very back seat. So, here there will be some phenomena will going to happen. So, suppose the path A, the sound path A will take the direct sound from to the, the, the front listener or the front audience, whereas the front, the back uh, listener or the back audience which is in the back seat with the audience in sitting in the back, he or she will get a very, very weak direct sound because when the sound is passed from this particular source to the back seat, in between he has to have uh, that particular sound has to actually encounter a lot of uh, loss, the frictional loss with the air, there may be air moisture, there may be some other things like the uh, uh, some other surfaces sometimes, maybe there are some other the audience also in between the front and the back seat. So, by virtue of that there is a weakness, weak uh, the sound will sound intensity will be fall down. And there will be another way the person who is actually in the last seat or the rear seat will get a sound by virtue of path C D, which is a pure reflection from the ceiling. So, this C D, this reflection will also encounter some loss, but it will not going to encounter the loss by virtue of the people who are sitting in between these two rows. So, this C D path will going to reinforce the weak direct sound which is actually coming from the path B. So, which is going to be beneficial for us, that is the number one criteria and number two criteria what we can say that this path A is the, uh, the, the direct sound from, from the source to the listener in the the, uh, the front row, but this listener A which is in the, uh, the front row is also going to get a another sound by virtue of reflection by the path B, C and D from the ceiling and the back wall. Now, there is a problem, the problem is the person who is sitting in the first row will get two sound, one a direct sound from A and another a indirect multi reflected sound from B, C, D and there will be definitely a lag, the time lag, the same sound will appear to him or reaches to him or her in a time uh, lag. And if the time lag is too much, I, if I am sitting there, I will definitely distinguish between the initial arrival and the final arrival of the sound and that will create the confusion of the hearing. So, this two, uh, the fundamental problem we can handle by virtue of some absorptive surface and the reflective surface. So, let us do some kind of a reflective surface like this, which is in the rare part of the auditorium or the hall. So, what will going to happen? If I put this blue color reflective surface or absorptive surface in the rare part, so there is no chance of any reflection and there is no chance of any reflection and the person in the sitting in the first row will not get the the second uh, multiple reflection sound. So, there will be no chance of any kind of the uh, any kind of the, the sound delay or so, but in the front portion I have if I put the, uh, the reflective surface which is red in color, then the sound will reflect and then that will go to the 
the the last bench or the last listener which is in the rear uh, seat and that, that will going to reinforce the sound which is the actually weak sound and that will be reinforced by this reflection. So, by virtue of last three slide what we understand is that both reflector and absorber is very important in a hall, but we should actually place it in proper position. If you just uh, reverse back the position, the front portion is the absorber and the rear portion is the reflector, things and behavior will be uh, going to change uh, uh, the, and automatically there will be lot of confusion and lot of hearing problem will be occurred in this room. Now, the next is uh, we will define the reverberation and the reverberation time. This is very important for our understanding of the room acoustics. The sound is uh, spread out and you know it is spread out in a particular enclosed space. It is a uh, kind of a the near field and then there is a far field kind of a propagation and when it is going to propagate and then it will going to reflect or going to strike in the different surfaces, different boundary surfaces and it will going to reflect it back or maybe absorbed because of the, 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 ref, uh, the surfaces character of the surfaces. And due to if suppose it is a it is a reflective surface altogether it is a reflective surface and there is a gradual and multiple reflection will occur in the various part of the hall. And due to this multiple reflection the sound energy will not going to decay and sound energy will say as it is almost as it is for a longer duration. And sound will then there will be kind of a problem will occur because I am getting a new sound which from the source and the old sound is reflected back and stay back for a certain amount of time. So, there will be a the mismatch between my new hearing new sound and the old perceived sound and that is called called the, the, the reverberation. It is not the echo, but it is the uh, reverberation as sense of the, the old sound which was in a steady state is stay back for a longer duration and it will create a confusion of hearing by virtue of new sound arrival. So, the phenomena of persistence of the sound inside a hall for some time even after the source is stopped or whatever is called reverberation. So, the sound is something like a, a stay back for a longer period of the, uh, for the time. Suppose you enter to a empty hall which hall or maybe empty room a quite a large room which is uh, no furniture nothing only the surfaces or the blank surfaces are there and if you shout if you talk the you will feel like it is reverberating it is the, the sound is stay back for a quite a long time. Or if you can go to some kind of a church or maybe some kind of the big auditorium uh, maybe at the time of construction and all because after you give some absorber the reverberation time will not going to perceive. So, those time you can see the when there are the hard surfaces the sound will stay back for longer duration. Now, the definition of the reverberation time. Now, as I understand that the reverberation is a staying back or the sustaining amount of sound. So, I need to find out how much time it will going to stay back in a particular room and how it can be modeled and how it can be actually formulated. So, by virtue of a support some, uh, some definition I can actually start thinking of modeling the reverberation time. So, it is known as the reverberation time is defined as the amount of time measure of course, in second to drop the sound level from some level to a 60 de degree decay. So, suppose a sound level is 100 in a steady state how much time it will take to fall 40 decibel. So, there is a decay by 40 uh, decay by 60 decibel. So, let us go to a graph. Suppose in x axis I am plotting the time and y axis I am plotting the decibel level or the sound level and I start some sound in a particular room and after some time I will stop the sound. And when I stop the sound, sound is still there because of the multiple reflection and I will get a graph like this. 
The initial portion of the graph is uh, flat because it is a steady state this part, this part is a steady state and then this particular point I have stopped the sound. So, there is no input. So, gradually it will decay down. Why it will decay down? Because there is multiple reflection. If there is a multiple reflection some amount of definitely sound will be definitely absorbed. So, by virtue of some typical time lag there will be some decay and that the, the sound energy will decay down like this by virtue of definition of the, the, the reverberation time. I have to find out the how much time it required to drop the particular sound energy level by 60 dB. So, as I told suppose it, it was 100 dB. So, I have to find out at 40 dB to get I mean to decay from 100 to 40 how much time is required in second and that is nothing but the reverberation time. So, let us derive the reverberation time by virtue of some physical uh, uh, some virtue of some physics so or physical understanding so suppose a sound is initiated by a intensity of i0 and there is a multiple reflection is occurring suppose it is the initial sound in a particular uh, uh, in a room and when it is strike in a particular surface the amount of energy is reflected back is 1 minus alpha into i naught which I have explained in the last lecture because alpha times i naught is absorbed. So, this is remaining for the for the room. So, it goes for the second reflection to other surface which is maybe opposite surface or maybe the orthogonal surface. So, after second reflection the some absorption will be happened over here the absorption is this i oh sorry 1 minus alpha into i naught times alpha. So, this much amount is again reflected back after the second reflection. So, that is 1 minus alpha to the power 2 into i naught. So, I can say after such n reflection at the after some n reflection so sound energy intensity is suppose i n and this i n will be 1 minus alpha to the power n into i naught. And by definition, let us suppose this i naught to i n, this drop is 60 dB. So, let us find how much time is required to get this particular drop. So, what we have do is that uh, my initial energy was i naught, which is this, and for i naught, this particular sound level, I have measured the what is the sound intensity level, and next after drop of 60 dB, it is after n reflection i n. So, this will be the sound intensity level at after uh, some time after some n reflection and the difference between this two is nothing but 60. So, now if I modify this equation, so I will get this equation and then further I this i reference and i reference will going to uh, cancel out and finally, I will get i naught by i n is equal to 10 to the power 6 and i n from the last uh, slide I know this is i naught into 1 minus alpha to the power n. So, this i naught will also get cancelled and finally, I can say 1 minus alpha to the power n equal to 10 to the power minus 6. So, somehow I have relate the mm, mm, the the initial and the final level of the sound intensity, initial and final level of the sound uh, intensity levels that is 60 dB and finally, got this particular final equation. Now, let us go to the uh, next slide and see the how this further it can be handled. So, I will now take a natural logarithm with base E for this and if I take the natural logarithm, it will look like this and this n will come in front and finally, I can find out how much is the n. It is, this is minus 6 log natural log of 10 and the log natural log of 1 minus alpha by natural log of 1 minus alpha. Next, we will have to conceptualize another thing that is mean free path. The mean free path is the mean path covered by any kind of uh, in a particular three dimensional space uh, for a particular ray. 
So, suppose from a particular point a ray is initiated and it strike to a particular surface and it is follow the, uh, the, uh, the law of reflection, it is go to the another surface. So, virtually it will follow the law of reflection and strike different surfaces and by virtue of this uh, the striking of different surfaces, it will travel some path and as you know the path length of the path will not be always equal. Now, if you take a sum up, sum this particular all the path and then take the average and that is called the mean free path and this mean free path will be all equal to for a rectangular room is 4 V by S, where V is the volume of the room and the total surface area is the S. The derivation of the mean free path is not in our scope and it is required a uh, the volumetric integration and a particular colloidal kind of the uh, study. So, as we suppose let us suppose this mean free path is 4 V by S. So, this mean free path the unit is centimeter or meter um, this is a path length. So, I can say that the average time taking to cross a this mean free path for a one single reflection is 4 V by S into C, where C is the velocity of the sound because path by velocity or the distance by velocity is the time. So, for single reflection you require 4 V by S C time. So, for n reflection you require 4 V into n by S C that particular time and this time is nothing but your reverberation time because I have by definition after n reflection the d B drop by 60 and n reflection you take you are taking this much amount of time the sound is taking this much amount of time. So, by definition this 4 V by S into C into whole into N is your reverberation time. Now, let me multiply everything. So, reverberation time and this comes from the earlier slide as N then S C and this 4 V is from the mean free path the single reflection path. So, now take everything out this 24 is 4 into 6 log e, uh, e to the power 10 and this 330 is nothing but this value of c the velocity of the sound in normal air. Then we left with this v by and this s and log of that. So, finally, we can get a equation like 0.16 v by minus s log 1 minus e is 0.16 is nothing but this particular value. This particular value is the 0.16. And this equation is called Carl Jung's equation, which was given is in 1930 and uh, by that physicist for to calculate the reverberation time. Sabine actually modified this equation to a further extent, and the extent is this. So he took this equation further, and what he uh, do is that if I expand now this log. E base 1 of an alpha 1 minus alpha, this will actually lead to a series like this minus alpha minus alpha square by 2 minus alpha square by uh, cube by 3 like that. So, as the alpha is less than 1 quantity of alpha the, the, the amount of alpha the absorption coefficient is always less than 1 and this is a small quantity. So, we can neglect the higher order of alpha. So, we can neglect this particular part. So, you can say this log E uh, that E base that natural log of 1 minus alpha is very close to minus alpha. So, I replace this log terms by minus alpha this minus and this minus will get cancelled. So, it is S alpha. So, I get the equation as 0.16 V by S alpha and this is the standard reverberation time equation given by Sabin known as Sabin's formula where V is the volume of the room, S alpha is the total absorption of the room and S is the particular surface area, area of the surface and alpha is the corresponding abs sound absorption coefficient of the surface. So, if you use this, uh, this equation which is given in the yellow box, you can use the metric unit, the meter and uh, those unit, but if you want to use in feet and inch, feet unit, then you can use the same equation in the given in the this red box, where only the instead of the 0.16 you have to use 0.049. Now, 
what are the factors that going to uh, affect this particular reversion time? The first one is the absorption. Why? Because as the absorption is increased or decreased, your alpha value will going to increase or decrease and for that the total absorption the S product alpha is going to also going to change and there will be variation in the in the reversion time. So, if you go for a higher uh, uh, absorptive surface like cushions in the chair, carpets in the floor, absorptive tiles in the walls or ceiling, we are going to render different higher values of uh, sound absorptive material and definitely the total absorption will be higher and we are will be expecting a lower amount of or uh, the lower reverberation time. What is the second factor? Second factor is definitely the frequency of sound. Why? Frequency of sound is not reflected in the RT equation, but still it is a factor because as we know and if you remember in the last uh, uh, discussion we have shown by the change of the frequency of the sound the alpha value is also going to change and it is incremental. Suppose the alpha value for 250 hertz will be lower with respect to the 2000 hertz. So, if the alpha value is changed for a particular frequency I also I must say that frequency of the sound is also going to change the reverberation time. Of course, it is not reflected directly in the equation, but of course, it is reflected by the NRC value, the average what we have taken. And the third and the final one is the volume of the room, because as the volume of the room is increased, uh, your reverberation time is going to get in, uh, going to be increased. And because your length of the mean free path is going to increase, there will be number of more reflection, number of more travel uh, for a single reflection and total number of travel is also going to be high and uh, that required uh, larger amount of time. So, uh, those three volume of the hall, the frequency of the sound and the absorptive surfaces amount of the absorption coefficient is the uh, uh, three basic parameter to define or to understand the, the reversion time. Here I have always written RT 60, if you remember in the last slides also, it is sometimes written in the some uh, way the RT uh, is uh, this, but it is better to write RT 60 because by definition RT is 60 dB drop. So, that RT 60 is written in this formula uh, or in this way. Sometimes we also calculate the RT value uh, RT 30, what is the drop for 30 decibel. Sometimes we also can think of some RT 10, what will be the drop initial drop of 10 decibel. So, for uh, further minute uh, correction of any interior of auditorium or so, particularly in the, uh, the electroacoustics part. So, uh, that is why it is better to write RT 60, but as in general if you write RT that means it is RT 60 uh, or the, the 60 decibel the basic definition point of view the, the, the sound uh, 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 reverberation time of uh, any enclosed area. So, let us now discuss some other way around how to find out the sound uh, reverberation time to relate to some other definitions life and dead room. Suppose, a particular room is fully reflective. So, what will going to happen? Your steady state, this is the steady state, in this yellow dot is the stoppage time of your sound. So, sound will decay and this decay will depend upon the, the amount of surface and amount of reflectivity or the absorptivity of the surface. If the surface is reflective, so, it is most reflective means the alpha value of the surface is very low. So, almost it will give you lot of reflection and the decay will occur in a very, very slow rate, very slow rate. And due to this decay is very slow rate, you see this particular line is extended like this and you will get a very high reverberation time, very high reverberation time. And due to this is very high, this particular room, this type of room is called live room and there is a dead room also. So, dead room in that case, what I have here is that is a steady sound, 
the stoppage of the sound and after the stoppage of the sound it is reflecting in the various surfaces and the surfaces are totally absorptive surface or mostly absorptive surface having very high value of alpha. So, after striking it may not come back or maybe it come back or the very uh, the weak of uh, the intensity will come back maybe after 2, 3, 5, 6, 50 reflections it will going to decay and it will be decay the rate of the decay of the sound will be very faster and that is why this line this is the, the decay line will be very stiff in order and will get the drop in a very quick time. So, if the this line is very stiff this reverberation time is also going to be very small and we will get a very low reverberation time and those rooms where there are the reflective surface has less and it is full of absorptive surface are called dead room. So, this dead room and the live room will be explained further by professor uh, 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 Shumuna Gupta in her lecture when we will be dealing with the, the uh, auditorium and other uh, acoustical uh, spaces. Now, let us know or let us understand the how this particular experimental way uh, how the reverberation time can be calculated, how uh, can be it calculated in a particular uh, room. So, suppose this is a uh, I have what I have drawn here is a section of a room and in that you just put a some sound source, sound frequency source. So, this is a particular sound source which will uh, give you, you can control the different frequency. If you want 1000 frequency you push a button and it will give you a 1000 frequency. You can regulate the volume of the, uh, the this particular source also. So, high volume or low volume something like that. And in another corner you put a microphone and it attaches that microphone with the computer. Whatever it is received in the microphone, the sound is received in the microphone in this particular point in this particular point uh, that will be actually recorded in the laptop or maybe a computer. So, after this particular thing you start with some frequency and after a steady state is arrived you stop that particular frequency. So, you will get a, a kind of a graph in the in your laptop or in your computer where in the x axis is the sound levels which is initially built up there is a steady state and then there is a drop after you stop. Now, you zoom this portion after the stoppage portion to the decay portion you zoom this portion you record it you save it in your computer and then you zoom it portion. And after zooming you find out what is the time and what is this time the difference of time this two point and as you see in the x axis the drop of 60 dB. So, you see how much is the drop from this particular point to a 60 dB and record what is the or just note down what is the time difference. So, if suppose it is 3 second and this is 3.15 second. So, the time difference is 0 0.15 second and you can find say that the reverberation time is 0 0.15 second or so. So, like that in various part of the room you can do, you cannot do only one, you can do or you can take a reading in the corner uh, placing the microphone in the corner, you can uh, in the middle in some uh, the sides. So, maybe 6, 7 area you can actually find out, you can actually has to take this microphone in the human ear level, this level otherwise uh, it would not be. Uh, that much practical. You cannot take it in the floor level or maybe in the ceiling level, better if you take in the human ear level and in various point in the, in the room and then get the, uh, the average out of this particular um, uh, the time and you can say that this is the tentative reversion time of the room. So, this is a very uh, brief uh, in a very brief I have explained the, the experimental procedure for the reverberation time. So, we are almost in the end of this chapter of reverberation concept of reverberation. I hope you understand what is the reverberation and I also hope that you have uh, the derivation may not be by that much important, but how that particular definition is translated by a derivation to a reverberation formula is very interesting. So, let us take some uh, the, the homework for today. And the first homework is again some kind of descriptive uh, discuss this four phenomena in case of a change of volume, total surface absorption, amount of surface opening 
and more occupancy and the furniture density, how it will reflect the reverberation time of a room? What do you feel? Uh, line, uh, write two, three lines on this particular four uh, cases that is one descriptive type and a subjective type or a mathematical type is that if suppose there is a, uh, a sound intensity of 0.5 watt per meter square was there in a particular uh, the room and there is a successive reflection, successive reflection of 50 times and after this 50 times of reflection uh, you got the final uh, absorption you have to find out the final absorption uh, intensity of the sound after this 50 reflection. If you imagine this 50 reflection is occur in a surface having the sound absorption coefficient of 0.2. So, the sound absorption surface is having 0.2 uh, uh, alpha value. So, there are 50 such reflection. So, it starts with 0.5 what will be the end product, what will be the end the intensity of the reflection. So, that you calculate and uh, these are the same books which I have followed for the last lecture also and this reverberation lecture. You can also go through these books and for your further studies. So, that is the end of the lecture number 9 concept of reverberation and uh, we will go further for the reverberation time applications and all in the next lecture. Thank you.